Okay, this will be a very simple introduction to 3D. We're going to start with a regular project. We know it's going to be 3D. Let's just start off by adding the camera. That way we can avoid the switch to 3D dialog. I'm going to add center guidelines. I'll just pull this down. Uh, you can see the mark in the ruler. I can turn the guidelines on and off with command semicolon and sometimes it just helps to have them out of the way when you're trying to draw the lines and it's always good to have a center reference when working with 3D to help you line up things. All 3D in motion is text based and so I'll just uh, Go ahead and add a character. And for this project, uh, let's just do a push pin. So I already know in advance that uh, there's one font that's really good for this, and uh, that's going to be the Menlo font. So Menlo is good because it's on everybody's system. Everybody who has Mac OS X has Menlo. And so if you create a design that you need to use on somebody else's computer, it'll be available. Now you want to make sure that uh, the characters you use and the fonts that you use have the shape that you require. Not all fonts use a perfect little circle for their bullet. But in this case, uh, Menlo does a pretty good job, and so we will go ahead and type option 8 and add our bullet to the canvas. We can go ahead and switch this to 3D. And go back into format and crank up the size. That's a good size right there. I'll go ahead and center the character. and centers pretty well there and we can use the baseline to center this vertically if we click off the character and back on you'll see that in the 3d appearance mode uh, you get this bounding box that actually perfectly fits the character so if i zoom in on this a bit I can make final adjustments. So the baseline, I want to line up the little blue dots to the guides. And I can use the X offset here to center that horizontally. Like so. Okay. Those are just some basic tips. They will come in handy eventually. They're not going to be that required for this project, but it's very useful. We're doing a push pin in this project, so I just need three copies of this character. So I'm just going to duplicate them three times. And for this one, let's just turn these off for a minute. Go into appearance. I'm going to change the substance to metal. Aluminum will be good enough. And I can just go ahead and dial down the weight. Let's take a look at what we got. All right. I'm going to move this out in backwards a little bit. Uh, you'll notice this 3D control here. The blue arrow is always on the front face side of 3D. And that'll be a good reference for when you're deciding to use front edge or back edge. In this one, I want to set the depth direction to backward. I'm going to run the depth out well, to a moderate length. To about there. And I'm going to set the back edge to bevel. 
and I'm going to turn the back edge size disclosure triangle down and run the depth out a bit. And then I'm going to dial up the width to make a point. See how that works? I'll make this a little longer if I want. Make it a little pointier. Now we have a very nice sharp point. Let's work on this character now. I'm going to change the depth a bit. Actually, okay. I'll just change that to 30 because I'm going to apply that to this one too. And we'll turn this one back on and we'll bring it about to there. Let's change the back edge to round at this point. This will give you the default round edge of 4 and 4. And we'll dial down the front edge size. We're going to change the front edge to concave. We're going to apply the depth and go all the way up till we touch the other one. And then we'll apply some width, like so. We'll come back to this first one. And we'll change the weight slightly lower. And we have a pushkin. We can select both of them, the first two copies, and change the color to whatever color you like. And there you go. It's a real simple 3D project to get your feet wet, and as time goes on, we'll get into more and more aspects of 3D. Because there's all kinds of things you can do. So I hope you'll stick around for some of these tutorials, and I'll catch you on the next one.